today I am going to give you a lecture on uh, subgroup, normal subgroup, quotient group and group morphisms. First of all, we start with the complex of a group. Let G be any group. Any uh, non-empty subset H of a group G is known as complex of group. For example, suppose we consider a multiplicative group G which consists of three elements, one omega and omega square with multiplicative operation. Then we choose any non-empty subset of G. Suppose H which consists of two elements, one and omega, omega square. This is example of complex of group. So complex of group means it's a part of group or it's a subset of group. Whether it form a subgroup or not, it doesn't make any difference because H must be a non-empty subset of group in order to form a complex of group. Suppose we choose another example, 1, minus 1, iota, minus iota. This is again a multiplicative group with four elements. And suppose we choose a subset H, which is 1, comma, iota. This is one of the subset of group G, which is a multiplicative group. And again, this H be a non-empty subset of G form a complex of group G. Next subgroup. A, a non-empty subset H of a group G is said to be a, a subgroup of G if H itself form a group for the induced operation. Induced operation means the uh, same operation to, for which group form a uh, the G forming group, the same operation followed by H also. Here we have two examples of subgroup like 1 minus 1 with a multiplicative operation is a subgroup of 1 minus 1 iota and minus iota. Another example is Z plus, it's a subgroup of Q plus where Z stands for set of integer and it always form a uh, group for additive operation and Z being a subset of Q. Where Q stands for set of rational numbers. So Z plus always form a subgroup for Q plus. Similarly, we have another subgroup Q plus is a subgroup of R plus because Q is a subset of R, where R stands for set of real numbers, and Q always form a group for additive operation, and because it contains in R, that's why Q is a subgroup of R plus. The last example is Q0. This Q0 stands for non-zero rational numbers. Non-zero rational numbers always form a group for multiplicative operation and because rational numbers contain a uh, set of real number and the set of real number, uh, non-zero uh, real number always form a group for multiplicative operation. So these are the few examples of uh, subgroups. Next, improper subgroup and proper subgroups. The two subgroups of G and E of the group G are called improper subgroup of G and if any other subgroup of G exists other than these two is called a proper subgroup of G. Criteria for, for a complex to be a subgroup a necessary and sufficient condition uh, that a non-empty subset of a group G to be a subgroup is that if you choose any two arbitrary elements in H for example A belongs to H Another element is B belongs to H. This implies if A into B inverse means first element inverse of second element. But product of these two elements, if again belongs to H, then H form a subgroup of G. These are the two important terms. The intersection of any two subgroup of a group G is always form a subgroup of G. And the next one is the union of two subgroup of a group G is a subgroup of G if and only if one is contained in the other. If we take an example, for example, this Z plus form a group for additive operation. And we choose a multiple of Z that is 2Z. And we know that this 2Z which contained in Z always form a group with additive operation and that's why 2z is a subgroup of z and this is another example of subgroup which is 3z 3z which is again a multiple of z and 3z also form a subgroup of a uh, set of integers and if we choose two elements like 2 belongs to 2z obviously 2 belongs to 2z and 3 belongs to 3z 
when we choose 2 and 3 belongs to 2z union 3z which are member of 2 and 3 both are member of 2z union 3z but when we add them like 2 plus 3 gives us 5 and 5 is not a member of 2z union 3z because 5 is neither multiple of 2 and nor multiple of 3 that's why the union of 2 subgroup is not necessarily a subgroup Coset of subgroup, suppose H is a subgroup of a group G and let A be any arbitrary element of G we define a product if you multiply any arbitrary element A which belongs to G with a set H and if you get AH equal to A into small h where small h is any arbitrary element of capital H and another is H capital H multiplied with A which is an arbitrary element of G from right hand side and it constructs a, uh, a collection of basically H A type of elements where H belongs to H Evidently this AH and H A both belongs to or contain a G This AH is called a left coset because we multiply arbitrary element A of G from left hand side and this H A is known as a right coset of H in G Next one is index of subgroup. If H is a subgroup of group G, then the number of distinct right or left cosets of H in G is called index of H in G and it is usually denoted by G is to H that is order of G divided by order of H. And the next one is Lagrange's theorem. According to this theorem, the order of each subgroup of a finite group is the divisor of order of group. Suppose we take an example of uh, group G which consists of 1 minus 1 iota and minus iota with a multiplicative operation and there is a subgroup H which consists of two elements 1 and minus 1 this 1 and minus 1 with all the properties of group and H being a subset of G so H become a subgroup of G and if we determine order of G because G consists of four elements so order of G is obviously four and order of H which is a subgroup of G is 2 and according to this Lagrange theorem order of G must divide order of H so this gives us 4 divided by 2, 2. so clearly Lagrange theorem is verified for this particular finite group So union of two subgroup need not be a, a subgroup because if 2z union 3z is not a subgroup of z as 2 belongs to 2z and 3 belongs to 3z so 2 and 3 are elements of the union 2z union 3z but just one 2 plus 3 5 is not an element of 2z union 3z because 5 is neither multiple of 2 and no multiple of 3 this is another example subgroup of integers let n belongs to z is any integer value and let n of z which contains elements like nx where x is any arbitrary element of z then nz is also subgroup of z the group of integer under the addition first we will show that uh, nz is closed under the additive operation if we choose two arbitrary elements nx and ny which belongs to nz Obviously, there is some again belongs to an x plus n y which gives us n time of x plus y, which is again a member of n z. So this shows a closure property in n z. Next, the identity because zero is a member of z and our operation is addition. So zero can be written as n time of zero, which gives us zero. So zero belongs to n z. Finally, suppose n x is some element of z, the additive inverse of n x is always there, which is minus of n x. So for every nx element which belongs to nz, there exists a minus of nx. So this shows the existence of inverse element, and therefore uh, this nz possesses all four essential properties of group. That's why nz is a subgroup of z. A subset that is not closed under the inverse, that is a group under the additive operation, is z star. The set of non-negative integers is a subgroup of z. Because Jadistar is a non-negative set of non-negative integers, so it includes numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. 
but it excludes all the negative numbers. So if some, if we choose two elements, m and n, belongs to z star, where m and n both are greater than or equal to zero because they're non-negative integers, and obviously that sum is again m plus n is again a member of z star. So z star this is a closer property for additive operations, and the next. 0 is a non negative integer and which is belongs to z star. So it possesses the identity element for, for additive operation. We know uh, 0 is the additive identity. But however, 3 belongs to z star, but the inverse minus of 3 does not belong to z star because z star consists of non negative integers. So minus 3 is not a member of z star. That's why, due to lack of this uh, inverse property in z star, z star is not a subgroup of z. This is another example of the integers as a subgroup of rational. Z is a subgroup of Q and the group of rationals under the addition. And if you add two integers, the resulting number is again another integer which is again belongs to Z. And Z possesses a zero, which is an identity element for identity operation. And further, for every n which belongs to Z, there exists a minus n in Z. So Z also possesses an inverse property. And finally, Z possesses all the properties for which we require for group. And that's why Z belongs to and Z is a subset of Q. So Z is a subgroup of Q. So the next normal subgroup, uh, subgroup H of group G is said to be a normal subgroup if and only if X, H, X inverse belongs to H. For every H belongs to H and for every X belongs to G. This, let us consider a group G and a subgroup H. The small h is any arbitrary element of H, while the small x is any arbitrary element of G. And if you find the product of x, h, and x inverse, this product again belongs to the capital H, x, h, x inverse, then this subgroup becomes a normal subgroup. And the symbol this we use for a normal subgroup, H is a normal subgroup of group G. The improper normal subgroups and proper normal subgroups. Every group G possesses two normal subgroups, namely G and E, where E is a singleton element, singleton group, which consists of alone identity element. And these two normal subgroups are known as improper normal subgroups. Other than these two normal subgroups, uh, are known as proper normal subgroups. Simple group. A group having only improper normal subgroups is called a simple group. Or in other words, we can say a group having no proper normal subgroup is called a simple group. And every subgroup of uh, every subgroup H of a abelian group G is necessarily a normal subgroup because G is abelian, so it possesses a commutative property. Hamiltonian group. Any non abelian group G is called Hamiltonian group if and only if every subgroup of G is normal subgroup. The next definition is normalizer. Let A be any arbitrary element of group G. Let us consider a group G having an arbitrary element A. Then the normalizer of this element A, which is denoted by NA, is the collection of all those elements of G which shows commutative property with particularly A elements. Means the NA consists of all those elements X of G which shows commutative property with A. So this NA consists of X belongs to G where AX equal to X. This A is particular element of G. Why? This X is a, those elements of G which shows commutative property with G. And here we have few remarks. Uh, the very first remark is NA is a subgroup of G. Means normalizer of any element of group always form a subgroup of G. The second remark is NA is not a normal subgroup of G in general. It may or it may not be a normal subgroup. And N of E is always equal to G. This shows because E is the identity element of group. And we know that identity element is always the commutative property with each and every element of group. That's why normalizer of E is equal to G. Normalizer of A is G if and only if G is abelian. If G is abelian then each and every element commits with every element of G. That's why at that time the NA becomes G. 
centralizer, let A be any non-empty subset of a group G, then centralizer of that set A is defined as C of A. It consists of all those elements of G which shows commutative property with every element of set A, where A is any arbitrary element of A. The center of a group, this is basically a abelian part of any group. The center of a group G is defined as an abelian part of a group and it is denoted by Z of G. Suppose we consider a group G, then the subset Z, which is a subset of G, is said to be a center of G if each and every member of Z commutes with every element of group. The next one is quotient group. Suppose H is a normal subgroup of G and all the, denote the set of all right process of H in G by G by H. So G by H is basically a collection of H A type of elements where A belongs to G. Let H A and H B are two arbitrary elements in G by H. And define the operation of multiplication of G by H as follows. This product of these two right process like H A and H B is equal to H of A B. Then G by H form a group under the multiplicative operation defined as above H A H B, H B is equal to H A B. Then G by H is known as quotient group. The next one is homomorphism. Let us consider a group G and another group G dash. Having a binary operation like star and O. The star is binary operation for G and O is the binary operation for G dash. If we define a mapping F which is from a group G to G dash, then a mapping F from a group G into G dash is said to be a homomorphism if it satisfies this property, means F of X star Y is equal to F of X O F of Y. For every XY element belongs to G. Then only this mapping F is called homomorphism from a group G to G dash if F satisfies this particular property. Next one is monomorphism. See, monomorphism is again a homomorphism with a one more additional property that is 1 1. This 1 to 1 correspondence is usually known as injective. So any homomorphism which possesses a 1 1 mapping is known as monomorphism. The second one is epimorphism. This epimorphism is a homomorphism F, which is defined from a group G to G dash, from one group to another group, and which is onto. This onto is a subjective property. So any homomorphism having a subjective property or an onto property is known as epimorphism. And next one is endomorphism. A mapping F from a group G into itself is called an endomorphism. So basically, endomorphism is a particular case of homomorphism. In case of homomorphism, we uh, choose a mapping F from one group to another group. And uh, here, we define our mapping F, which is a again homomorphism, but it is from G onto G itself, from G to G, instead of G to G dash. That's why. In, on both side of the equation, we observe both the operations are same, star operation star, because here mapping F is from G to G instead of G to G dash. So, endomorphism is nothing, it's just a particular case of homomorphism. And we come to the next, that is isomorphism. A mapping F from a group G star into a G dash O. Let us consider a group G with a star operation and another group G dash with binary operation O. If you define a mapping F which is from G to G dash and if this mapping possesses three important properties. The very first property which is known as a one-one mapping. One-to-one -one correspondence means this shows one-one means if we choose two images fx and fy as an identical, then this implies elements are always same. Means each distinct element of G associate with distinct element of G dash. 
This property is known as one one, where each distinct element of G associates with the distinct element of G S. This correspondence is known as one one. And if F in addition to one one, if F is also on two, on two stands for each member of G dash must possess a pre-image in G. Means there is no element in G dash left ideal which does not possess any pre-image in G. So whenever you are mapping F is one one, at the same time it is on two, and finally if it is homomorphism, homomorphism is again saying F of x star y is equal to F x O F y for every x y belongs to G. So a mapping which is one one on two and homomorphism. Which satisfy all three criteria, one one on two and homomorphism is known as isomorphism. The next one is automorphism. See, automorphism is just an isomorphism. The only the uh, the very slight difference between an isomorphism and automorphism is that in case of isomorphism, we mapped our mapping f from G to G dash, from one group to another group. While in case of automorphism, we mapped a mapping from G to G onto G G onto itself. From G to G, this is the only difference. Otherwise, automorphism is again a mapping from G to G, and which satisfies all these three criteria: one, 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 two, and homomorphism. So, an isomorphism of a group G onto itself is called an automorphism. That is one, 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 two, and homomorphism property F, which is from G to G. So let us consider a few examples which is based on homomorphism. We check whether the given uh, mapping homomorphism or not. So the very first example is constant maps are not homomorphic. Consider the group Z under the addition. You know Z always form a group for any new operation which is set of integers. And we discuss a mapping F which is from Z to Z. And mapping is defined F of n is equal to 3. For every n belongs to Z. For every n belongs to Z, our mapping is f of n is equal to 3 because it is a constant mapping, so we choose 3. You may choose another constant also. Let us start with f of 1 plus 1 because according to homomorphism, we must have f of x, x star y is equal to f of x o f y. In order to prove homomorphism, and in our case, we are mapping z, z to z. So the operation remains same. Star operation remains same for because here we have additive operation, and in this case, we are also additive operation. So f of one plus one, we start with the assumption suppose one belongs to z, one belongs to z, and f of one plus one gives us f of two. And f of two, according to our mapping or the definition of uh, mapping f, f of n is 3, so f of 2 gives us 3. Why? f of 1 plus f of 1 gives us 3 plus 3, that is 6. And we observe that f of 1 plus 1 is not equal to f of 1 plus f of 1. This shows this constant mapping are not homomorphism because they do not satisfy the criteria for homomorphism, which is f of x star by should be equal to fx star f y. The next example of logarithms and exponential. Let us consider an exponential which is made from r plus to r dot, r plus dot, where r plus stands for r is a set of real numbers and form a group for additive operation, and the other r plus dot is again a group with a positive real numbers with an operation multiplication. So let us define a mapping f, uh, which is exponential mapping, which is from r plus to r plus dot. Is a homomorphism from the real under the addition to the positive real number under the multiplication. The operation on the domain r is addition, while the operation on r plus, which is a range set, is multiplication. So if exponential of x plus y is equal to exponential of x dot exponential of y, because in domain set we have additive operation, while in range set we have operation multiplication. So for any two real number x y belongs to R 
exponential x plus y is equal to exponential x dot exponential y. Further, we rewrite the expression because exponential x plus y can also be written as e to the power x plus y. And exponential x dot exponential y can be written as e to the power x into e to the power y. Further, we know that when base are same, we just add the integral powers like x plus y. So e of x plus y is always equal to e x into e y. And this shows exponential is a homomorphism. See, if we consider uh, exponential mapping which is from r plus to r plus. Previously we discussed mapping from r plus to r plus dot which is uh, additive operation to multiplicative operation. But here we consider r plus to r plus. So in both the set, in the domain and brain set, we have operation addi addition. It's not a homomorphism. In this case, we are using addition as the operation on, uh, on the both domain and brain. So the homomorphism property would say exponential of x plus y is equal to exponential of x plus exponential of y, which is in other words, e to the power x plus y is equal to e x plus e y, and which is contradictory because e to the power x plus y is not equal to e x plus e y. So let us verify the, this identity if we replace x with 1 and y with 1. So we will find e to the power 1 plus 1 which gives us e square and e to the power x plus e to the power y gives us twice of e. And we know that e square is not equal to 2e for any value of e. So, checking whether the function is homomorphism, we are making f defined from z to z by f of x equal to 5x. For this particular mapping, we discuss whether this mapping is homomorphism or not. To show that f is homomorphism, let us consider two, two variables x and y which belongs to z. And since the operation on z is addition, so we must follow this f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y. Check it if f of x plus y is written as 5 times of x plus y. This is all due to the definition of function because our function defined as f of x equal to 5 times of x. So f of x plus y according to this function can be written as 5 times of x plus y and which further split into 5x plus 5y. And according to this mapping again 5x is written as fx and 5y can be written as f of y. So finally we observe it satisfies our homomorphism condition which f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y and that's why a mapping which is made from z to z with the definition fx equal to 5x is always homomorphism. Now this is another example to show that a function is not a homomorphism give a specific counter example. So let us discuss the example defined maybe g which is from a set of integer to set of integer means z to z and with the definition g of x is equal to x square. To show that g is not a homomorphism we must find two variable x, y and z such that g of x plus y is not equal to g of x plus g of y. If we just fulfill this condition then we say this uh, maybe g is not a homomorphism. So let us choose the two elements randomly like x equal to 2 and y equal to 3. So g of 2 plus 3 which gives us g of 5 and according to our mapping g of 5 means 5 square which is 25. And when we split it into a two portion like g of 2 and g of 3 and again we apply the same definition of function which is gx equal to x square. So g of 2, 2 gives us 2 square while g of 3 gives us 3 square. So finally we get 4 plus 9 that is 13 and because this 25 is not equal to 13 and that's why since g plus g of 2 plus 3 is not equal to g of 2 plus g of 3 hence g is not a homomorphism. Now we discuss a homomorphism on a matrix group. Let M2R be a group of 2 into 2 real matrices under the matrix addition. We define a mapping which is press. Press of press means press of any 2 into 2 order matrix ABCD is defined as A plus D, which gives us addition of principal diagonal element. Press of any matrix means the sum of principal diagonal elements. So 
Here we define a gaping trace which is from M to R to R. We know the tracement that is trace of A, B, C, D is defined as A plus D which gives us some of the principal diagonal elements. Now we check whether this trace may be uh, form a homomorphism or not. So trace of A, B, C, D first matrix 2 of 2 into 2 order to the other matrix A dash, B dash, C dash and D dash which gives us, after adding these two matrices of 2 into 2 order, we get a resultant matrix which is again a 2 into 2 order and that is A plus A dash, B plus B dash, C plus C dash and D plus D dash. And when we determine trace of this particular matrix, because sum of principal diagonal element is A plus A dash and D plus D dash. So, trace of A, B, C, D plus A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash is given by A plus A dash plus D plus D dash. Now we discuss trace of A, B, C, D first 2 into 2 matrix plus trace of A dash, B dash, C dash and D dash. Finally, the trace of this 2 into 2 matrix is given by A plus D which is sum of principal diagonal element. At the same time, trace of this second matrix is A dash plus D dash. And since A plus A dash plus D plus D dash is equivalent to A plus D plus A dash plus D dash and it follows that trace of the sum of these two matrices is equal to the sum of individual trace of both the matrices and therefore the trace is a homomorphism. This is another example of homomorphism uh, involving multiplication and addition. Let Q be the group of rational numbers under the additive operation and Q plus which stands for all positive rational numbers under the multiplicative operation. So here we define a mapping F which mapped from a set of rational number Q to the uh, another set Q plus that is set of positive rational numbers. And here we define our mapping as F of X is equal to 2 raised to power X. And we will check that F is homomorphism or not. So note that this is the operation on Q is addition and operation on Q plus is multiplication. So we must show that f of x plus y because in this case our domain set having an operation addition while main set contain an uh, operation multiplication. So we define our homomorphism condition as f of x plus y is equal to f of x into f y for all x y belongs to q. So f of x plus y can be written as 2 is to power x plus y. This is all due to the definition of our given function which defines f of x is equal to 2 raised to power x. So f of x plus y is equal to 2 raised to power x plus y. Further, we can easily split this uh, because when base are same, powers are just x. So 2x plus y can also be written as 2x dot 2 raised to power y and which is further equal to fx and fy. So here we observe that f of x plus y gives us fx dot fy and it fulfills the criteria for homomorphism. That's why this mapping f which is from q to q plus form a homomorphism. Now we discuss few isomorphic criteria like non-isomorphic groups. Here we have two groups, S3, which is a well-known symmetric group of permutations, S3. And another one is Z6, which is stands for uh, integer set, integer group. So both are the groups of order 6, because the S3 contains factorial 3 number of elements, which is equivalent to 6. 6 members are there in S3. Uh, suppose we choose a set with 2, 3 symbols, 1, 2, 3, and we describe a symmetric group S3 which contains element like F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 and F6. These six permutations we can define on set X. So this S3 is a symmetric group of permutations having a six elements and that's why order of S3 is six. And the another group is Z6 which consists of integers and it also uh, contains elements, number of elements six. So However, Z6 is an abelian group because set of integers always possess a commutative property. So Z6 is always abelian group. While we know that the product of two permutation is not identical, means uh, if you find f into g, 
then it is not necessary that it is equivalent to g into f. So permutation multiplication is not always limited to until and unless you are uh, disjoint, uh, we consider a disjoint cycle because disjoint cycle product is always commuted. So here S3 is non abelian while Z6 is abelian group. Therefore, this S3 and Z6 are not isomorphic to each other. There is one more example of uh, non isomorphic property in a group of different cardinality are not isomorphic. For example, we consider Z, which is a set of integers, and set of integers is always countable, while capital R stands for set of real number, and which is, which is always uncountable. So, note that two groups with the same order are not necessarily isomorphic. In the previous example, we showed that S3 and Z6 are not isomorphic, even though both of them are ordered.